The island of Sicily lies as a triangle across the center of the Middle Sea, dividing it into two and almost forming a bridge that joins Italy with Africa. Few islands have been better favored by nature. Its climate is mild and its scenery beautiful, with rugged mountains and smiling valleys and plains. Even the frequency of earthquakes and the ever-present menace of Mount Etna, though they have borne constant witness to the caprice of natural forces, have, in compensation, added to the richness of the soil. Man has been less kindly to the island. Geography placed it to be an inevitable battleground between the forces of Europe and Africa and to be an essential possession for anyone who would rule the Mediterranean world. Its story is one of invasions, wars and tumults. Sicilian history begins when the Siculi themselves saw their land invaded and colonized by the two great seafaring peoples of the ancient world, the Phoenicians and the Greeks. The Greeks came in about 700 BC, founding their cities around the coasts of the eastern half of the island. The Phoenicians had come already, sailing in from the colonies that they had established in Africa and occupying the western half. There were wars between the two peoples in which the Greeks held the mastery, though the Phoenicians, with the great African empire of Carthage to back them, remained a danger. When they were not fighting the Phoenicians, the Greek city-states settled down, Syracuse being the chief city, particularly renowned for having driven off the Athenian expedition, and now and then a tyrant of Syracuse, a Hiron or a Dionysius, would establish a rule that for a few years kept peace and order. Despite the troubles, it was a happy time. The Greeks had introduced the olive and the vine. Cornfields covered the great central plain. Flocks were plentiful on the hillsides. The gay and innocent lives of the peasants have been immortalized in the idols of Theocritus, yet even so man was beginning to rob the island of its wealth. The cities, both Greek and Phoenician, had their ships for war and for merchandise, and the forest trees began to fall under the axes of the shipbuilders. Erosion and desiccation were started. soil was washed off the mountains, and the pleasant rills which watered the valleys began to be replaced by courses down which torrents poured in winter, but which lay bare and dry under the summer sun. The idyllic age did not last for long, for Sicily from its geographical position was inevitably involved in the great wars between Rome and Carthage. By 200 BC, the whole island was under the domination of Rome. The Romans treated the island considerately. They needed the com that it grew to feed their enormous capital city. There were bad periods. The islanders suffered under the exactions of Governor Verres, against whom Cicero thundered, and they were involved in the wars of Sextus Pompey against the central government. But the writers of Rome have little to say about Sicily. We must assume that their silence is testimony to a quiet prosperity. The island was now essentially Greek. The decline of the Roman Empire and its extinction in the West brought new troubles to the island. A storm in the Straits of Messina saved it from invasion by Alain and the Visigoths but soon afterwards it was raided and for a time occupied by the Vandals, operating from Carthage. When Emperor Justinian sent an army from Constantinople to restore Sicily to the empire before proceeding to the conquest of Italy from the Ostrogoths, his troops were everywhere welcomed. There followed a brief period of quiet, during which, however, it seems that the Anopheles mosquito made its appearance in the island with the curse of malaria, 
the population began to dwindle. In the middle of the 7th century, trouble started again. The Muslims by now had conquered Syria and Egypt, and as they planned to extend their empire westward, Sicily was an obvious objective. Their first raid of the island took place in 652, but it was not until they conquered the African shores opposite in the early years of the 8th century that the pressure became acute. Emperor Constans, despairing of holding the east against Islam, planned to move his capital back from Constantinople to Old Rome. When that proved to be impracticable, he settled at Syracuse. But his officials were horrified by his abandonment of Constantinople, and one day in 668, when he was taking a bath, a courtier struck him fatally on the head with a soap dish. On his death, the government returned to the Bosphorus. During the 8th century, the Byzantine emperors managed to keep hold of Sicily. There were one or two local revolts, inspired by the dislike of the islanders for the iconoclastic policy of the Azorian emperors. But at the same time, the Greek elements on the island were enthusiastically preserved.